Hello, I'm Jacob Hudis and welcome to my physics YouTube channel. In this playlist, I explore science headlines and dive into the ones that catch my eye, sharing insight into the latest news in science and engineering. Today, I want to discuss an article I found in Scientific America. It was in April 2024. The title of the article is A Golden Age in Renewable Energy is Beginning and California is Leading the Way. Before diving into the article highlights, I want to share a graph I found after reading the article. Later in this video, I'll explore more data from the Energy Information Administration and discuss additional graphs like this one. Terrific! This is a graph of energy consumption in the United States over the past 50 years. It starts from around 1970 and it goes to roughly 2024. This orange color line is the total energy used in the United States as a function of time. The units of this are quadrillion British thermal units. First thing I notice on this graph is the amount of energy that we've been using increased significantly in the past 10, 15 years. What are these other lines? The blue line is the amount of fossil fuels that America uses. As we know, fossil fuels produce greenhouse gases which are linked to global warming. While carbon dioxide is the main gas in fossil fuel combustion, other gases like methane, methane relief. Oh my! Nitrous oxide, and fluorinated gases also contribute significantly to global warming. All the way down here at the very, very bottom of the graph is nuclear energy used by the United States and total renewable energy used by the United States. I was very surprised to see this graph because since about 1995, 30 years ago, there's been an incredible amount of talk about global warming and alternative energy sources. And this is not a very impressive increase to me. Another thing that stands out to me on this graph is that the amount of energy that we're using is increasing. And so even though the amount of green energy that we're using is increasing, so is the amount of fossil fuels. And therefore, we're still increasing the amount of fossil fuels that we're using, and we're still putting more greenhouse gases into the environment. I'm surprised by looking at this. This really doesn't seem like the problem is being solved. On this slide, I'm going to discuss the highlights from this article from Scientific America titled A Golden Age in Renewable Energy. California has achieved record-breaking days where wind, water, solar energy exceed electricity demand on the made grid for 15 minutes to over nine hours per day. And this is only during the daylight time. So what this is saying is that in 2024, there was one day where wind, water, and solar produced enough energy during the daylight time to power all of California, where they didn't have to use any fossil fuels. Only during daylight, you can use solar to charge batteries, but you can only get solar energy when the sun is shining. The article went on to say solar power alone exceeded demand for the first time on April 11, 2024, and again peaked at 123.9% of demand on April 21st. It also said that there was a battery storage breakthrough. California's nighttime battery output reached 6.5 gigawatts on April 21st, 2024. And the article says this was equivalent to seven nuclear reactors. I looked into this and I found that California's daily consumption of around 800 gigawatt hours, a sustained 6.5 gigawatt battery output would only cover a small portion of the total demand. So even though this might be a nighttime battery output record, it's really not very significant. The article says there were challenges in the summer. 100% wind, water, and solar is yet to be achieved in summer due to high air conditioner use. But growth in solar, batteries, and, higher, and hydropower may help meet future demand. This article then went on to say these are the future prospects. California's progress shows a transition to 100% renewable energy is possible. That's what the article said. Providing financial benefits, eliminating the need for fossil fuels or nuclear power. The global implications, as stated by this article, are similar energy transition plans are feasible for other states and countries at low cost. So that's what the article said. Before diving deeper into the charts from the Energy Information Administration, let's take a moment to discuss the energy sources we rely on today. Let's do this. Energy powers everything from our cars, computers, to various types of machinery. AcePhysics.org, math and Yay! physics tutorial. It's the force behind nearly all modern conveniences and technology. It's no understatement to say that discovering a sustainable, affordable, efficient, and clean energy source could be the greatest achievement in human history, surpassing the internet, AI, quantum computing, and even the toilet. Alternatively, we could return to a more primitive lifestyle, reducing our energy use and living like our ancestors in simpler dwelling. That too could represent a significant, I'll be very different kind of progress. The conventional energy sources that we use today are burning wood, 
flowing water, and burning fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, and natural gas. Non-conventional sources of energy are solar energy, wind energy, biomass energy, ocean energy, geothermal energy, and nuclear energy. And if you're the young scientist out there working on this, hopefully you'll be the person to add to this list the one source of energy that's gonna solve all of humanity's problems. Fossil fuels are coal, petroleum, and natural gas. The pros of fossil fuels are that they have a high energy density, they're reliable, there's already existing infrastructure, and they're relatively cost-effective. The cons of fossil fuels are they're wrecking the environment and they're basically gonna destroy the world. Do I know this for sure? No. Does anyone know this for sure? Maybe. Is it possible this is not true? Yes, it's possible. Anything's possible. I do believe if we could find a better energy source, it could impact humanity in a very positive way. Are wind, water, and solar energy really the way to go? I don't think wind and water can produce enough energy. I personally do believe in solar energy, and one of my reasons for that is because the Earth receives about 9,000 times more energy from the sun every day than humans consume globally. So the sun is giving us enough energy, and it also seems to me that if we can take some of the heat from the sun and convert it into mechanical energy, that could possibly help with global warming because we'd kind of be removing some of the heat that hits the Earth. However, solar energy comes with all of its own sets of problems. For example, energy storage. Solar energy only works during the day. Solar energy only works when there's light out. Large-scale solar adoption needs efficient storage like battery, which involves significant environmental and resource concerns due to mining for materials like lithium. In addition, solar has been being discussed since the 70s. And maybe I'm wrong, but I personally haven't seen that much progress. And so it makes me wonder, what's going on? Why is this so hard to get this to work? Nuclear energy is another option, but that comes with its own set of problems primarily related to having nuclear fuel, even reactor grade, into the wrong hands. This is a graph of global greenhouse gas emissions from fuel combustion products. Coal is the bottom layer, and as you can see, coal has been the biggest contributor and remains so, followed by oil, which is this layer, natural gas is in the middle, and then this little sliver is biofuels. From 1971 to 1995, emissions rose from 10,000 units to about 22,000 units of greenhouse gases. Then from 1995 to 2022, they increased to 35,000 units. You may have heard of Al Gore. He was a presidential candidate. And around 2005, he published a book and began speaking extensively about global warming and greenhouse gas emissions. When I look at this graph, I don't see the progress we'd hoped for. What do you think? Yeah, in this slide, I talk about the countries that use the most energy and the countries that use the most fossil fuels. So first of all, the top five energy consumers are number one, China, number two, United States, God bless number three, America. India, four, Russia, and five, Japan. This bar graph on the top shows the amount of fossil fuel energy used per person in various countries. Interestingly, Canada Pouting tops anyone? the list, but they're not one of the biggest overall energy consumers. Countries that use the most fossil fuel per person are Canada, the United States, God Russia. bless America. On average, the world population used 17,000 430 kilowatt hours. That's about one third of what each American uses. God bless this America. This graph on the bottom shows a breakdown of several countries and what percentage of their energy comes from fossil fuels versus various renewable sources. This is from fossil fuels, and then we have nuclear, and then we have renewable. And the world as a whole is not using a lot of renewable energy. In conclusion, I have some questions. Maybe you can answer these in the comment section below. Do you believe that California is truly on track to transition to 100% renewable energy, or is this claim exaggerated by the media? Do you think it's realistic to completely eliminate the need for fossil fuels and nuclear power, or is the goal overly optimistic? Do you believe that other states and countries can easily replicate California's renewable energy success to low cost, or are we being misled about the feasibility of these transitions? Is the global shift towards renewable energy really happening as fast and effectively as reported, or is the progress being overstated by the media? Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H. AcePhysics.org. Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.